the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Enos, can you take roll call for the record? Sure. Commissioner Baca? Here. Commissioner Godioso? Here. Commissioner Rakowski? Here. Commissioner Neary? Here. Commissioner Whitaker? Here. Lisa Catania? Michael Pierce? Here. And myself, George Needles, present. Thank you. At this moment in time in our meeting, I will take citizen comments from residents who are not able to attend the meeting in person. Uh, during this time, you may dial our call-in number. The call the call in number is 571-748-4021. Again, the call number is 571-748-4021. The code to enter is 982-930-837 pound. Again, the code is 982-930-837. 830873 pound. To mute your phone, please dial star six. After muting your phone, state your name and your address, then begin your comment. You'll be given two minutes to speak and be placed back on mute after your comment. So at this moment, we'll start citizens' comments and I will give it the usual two minutes to see if anybody will call in. Yes, this is Thomas Loesch. How are you this evening? Good, good, good. Uh, address is 425 Swamp Road, Morgantown, PA, 19543. Can you please state your comment? Can I, my, my comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just like to first of all start off by saying good evening, um, Mr. Needles uh, and the board. My comment is, as you may know, I have sent uh, an email or two with uh, a couple of documentation in request for uh, the release of the property at 2340 Thomas Avenue on the repository list. Okay, um, yes, I'm, I'm aware of your request. Okay. I believe at this point and point in time, the board is um, reviewing the repository list throughout the Upper Chichester Township, and we're um, reviewing to see what areas that we would like to keep for open space at this moment in in time. So I don't I, I don't think the board is going to make any um, decisions on whether or not we will be releasing any of those properties at this moment. You know when that would change? Um, I can't give you a definite date. You see, um, I don't want to re. I understand what you have said. I don't want to rehash obviously everything that I mentioned. Um, is there a possibility of looking upon favor, of seeing that um, I have presented a variety of different opportunities that we would possibly pursue if we would have this property, can, uh, including. Uh, having a builder uh, come in and place a structure on it upon approval of all the different plots and the plans and the, and the and what needs to be abided by by the township as well as also looking upon it as a real estate agent to turn around and uh, putting it on the market or even specifically looking at primarily putting out I have a letter drawn up to send out to the immediate neighbors on that street within a two mile radius of giving them the opportunity uh, to purchase it first. I would just like to know that presented those opportunities, options, I should say, in the file that I sent over. And is that something that could possibly be considered to expedite the decision? Um, again, at this moment of time, um, we are reviewing the list and I, I believe uh, we're not ready to uh, make any decisions on whether or not we will be re releasing any of those properties uh, for sale. The only thing I can tell you is that, you know, check back uh, per uh, periodically. Uh, but um, at this moment of time, I cannot give you a definite date. Okay. Thank you very right. much. Thank you for calling in. Appreciate it. Great. Okay. Thank Bye -bye. you. George, where was that address? His uh, letter there? Okay. 
I'll give it. We'll, I'll give an, an, um, another minute to see if anybody calls in, and then we'll move on to citizens' comments within the room. All right, um, at this moment, we'll move on to citizens' comments um, with our members of our residents present at the meeting tonight. So that's it. Anybody would like to speak? Miss A. Uh, Pam. <laughs> I, I know we know you, but can you please state your name and address for, for the record? My name is Pam Andrian. I live at 2403 Navy Street Road in Booth Wynn. And what brought me in here tonight was almost getting rear-ended again. Pulling out of my parking space onto Boudouin Avenue, and I finally realized I own, my property runs all the way down the line to Boudouin Avenue at that point almost, so I could come in and represent myself and didn't have to wait for my neighbors to do it. Um, I'm gonna read you an email I sent to the township, one of many, this one is from October uh, 11th, 2019. Um, we've been complaining about the cut-through traffic, the speed of the cut-through traffic. On this street, they go around the light, they do it to avoid the train, they've driven over one of my neighbor's properties, and something needs to be done about it. Um, this is not the first time I've almost been rear-ended. My husband was almost hit head-on by people driving down the middle of the street, coming down from Newman Street Road, not even bothering to slow down. The speed limit is 15 miles an hour there, not 35, and running the stop signs in the back, which has almost got us hit several times. So let me read this. Can you tell me the name of the person I have to talk to to get some speed bumps or other traffic calming measures that can be taken to do something about the speeding cut through traffic here? I was almost hit head on by a driver who came off Namens Creek Road this morning at 35 miles an hour. The speed limit here is posted 15. She didn't even slow down. I was already out of my driveway and heading toward the stop sign when the car came around the corner into my travel lane and just missed me. This happens very often. The back road, Broomall Street, has the same problem with speeding cars that cut through from Meeting House Road to go around the traffic light and the train. They also come out Euclid and Worth Roads to cut through onto Namens Creek Road. When there is train traffic, they have even done U-turns on my neighbor's front lawn to go back and try and come out another street. Uh, forget about the landscape where you have that. There are stop signs, but almost no one stops. One of my neighbors even has volunteered to help me count cars that run, just slow down, roll through, and stop for the stop sign. The police have been back here. They've been back there very often, on and off, even putting Officer Gregory back there at one point. Um, but they can't babysit the intersections all the time, which is true. Um, they have much more important things to do than that. Um, we have given, well, I have given a couple of different options, which are um, putting in some speed bumps, making our road one way, but you have to put up a barrier because nobody pays attention to the signs anyway. And uh, there was another one which I can't think of off the top of my head. Right. Uh, um, I think I think we get the gist of it, uh, Pam. So, uh, Ed, I know this is your ward. Have you have you have, have you communicated this with your commissioner? Or, um, uh, yes, yes, I have, and he actually gave me a name for it tonight. Uh, so, but I've been trying for years and years and years, okay. and nothing's done. I mean, we. I'm, no, I did. Let me answer the. Go, go ahead, uh, Ed. She's forgetting the other email. I, I did send the email. Um, it came up again numerous times. Matter of fact, I forwarded the last email to Mr. Neary and the chief regarding the motorbikes and the traffic. Um, 
I gave her the same instance as East and West Helms Manor uh, for the neighbors to, to put up a petition. Uh, we are, I'm going to request tonight or next week, either or, for the board to do a traffic study in that area. Uh, we have to do the due process to get it through. Uh, you also request that you would like to see the homes or the, the speed bolts that they have on Cherry Tree Road, but uh, we as a township put in the speed, speed tables. I did give you the information I got from both engineers that were here before on traffic common. Uh, I think we could do a little better at Broomall and Euclid than a speed hump or a table. Um, we have the issues not just for cars. We had the mini bikes, the four wheelers, the, and this has been going on. And you're absolutely right. Every time you email me, it goes right to the chief. Uh, we will start the due process. Nope. Some of the neighbors don't want to do this petition, but we need to have a petition. Uh, we need to have a traffic study and then take it from there to see what's recommended. And even if it's Al, I think it's Frederico, uh, for the traffic study, just as we did in East and West Helms Manor. Uh, and then we can meet with the neighbors and see what happens. Can you send me a copy of a petition that I can look at? Sure. I have no idea. Sure. And the other thing is, the people that are taking back to Thomas Manor live back there. The ones that are coming through our neighborhood generally do not live in our neighborhood. They are using it as a cut road. I, I would probably say you're correct, probably 50 50, maybe 60 40, but most of them probably still live on the other side of to get across to East and West Helms Manor because they beat the traffic light and they beat the train. So you're absolutely correct. Thing I was going to bring up, which is this was the ATVs, which you already did. I had my son install a dash cam in the front of my truck. But the other day, I had two red mini bikes pull out in front of me and a green and white motorcycle all in one day within an hour's period. So that um, they could take it off there so they could see who it was. They weren't teenagers, but teenagers in my house are six foot tall, so I might be mistaken. Okay, they look like little kids on mini bikes, and then the other one was a regular size motorcycle, not licensed. Little kid on the crossbar, which would have been detrimental to the little kid if he would have seen it, or I actually would have hit him like I always did. I just wanted to bring that up too. But um, Commissioner Krause said he did notify Chief Bush and he said he was going to have patrols come through if he could after school when this is going on. I do appreciate that, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, I'm sure Commissioner Rokowski will get the traffic study going. Uh, we've done s similar studies like this throughout the township, so just give them a little bit of time to uh, get the process going, and um, hopefully we can come up with a solution for you, Pam. I sure hope so. And I want to thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right. I let the record show there are no more citizens' comments tonight, and we'll move on to our regular meeting. Uh, prior to prior to getting to prior prior to having our professionals report, we have a presentation from MIPC on a request waivers from the grading permit application for the pipeline for the pipeline relocation project on 141 Conchester Highway. So at this time, hopefully, we have a representative that can present for us. Yes. Hi. Mr. Needles, Commissioner Lisa, thank you for your time this evening. Are you hearing me okay? I hear an echo on my side. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. My name is Christine Cherokee. There's an uh, echo. There is a definite echo. Okay. Hmm. At least from my perspective. Let me try to put the volume down a bit. I did not call in. Is that any better? Yes, that's better. Okay. Okay, apologize for that. Um, again, uh, thank you, Mr. Needles, Commissioners, Lisa, for your time this evening. My name is Christine Shiroki, uh, representing MIPC, uh, and some of my team members are on. Um, but I first wanted to go over for a brief 30 seconds, our project overview, as you may be aware, MIPC is performing a pipeline relocation project in Upper Chichester Township. Joe can pull up that on his screen there. 
As you see, the line in red, if you, if you all can see it, is the existing pipeline. Uh, the driver for the relocation project is twofold. First and foremost, primarily, is the PennDOT 322 road widening project. Uh, that's the line that you see straight through 322 there. And then the second portion going out is to increase MIPC's pipeline reliability. The reason why we're not going directly parallel to the 322 relocation project is because there are existing buildings and infrastructure that will not let us go directly north in parallel. Therefore, we're, our only route is to go around the energy transfer partners property, which also happens to minimize the effects of adjacent landowners. So the green route that goes all the way around the 322 portion is the route that we have to take to be able to relocate the line that's underneath 322. Are there any questions on the general overview of the project? As part of this project, there are multiple permits that are required, one of which is the grading permit from Upper Chichester Township. Uh, we submitted that, I think, around December of last year. And in March of this year, we received some comments back. Um, we are in the process of fulfilling the majority of those comments. Uh, there were seven of them. However, two of those comments are directly in relation to the stormwater management requirements. Uh, this is Township Ordinance 490. That is what we are requesting a waiver from. Uh, the reasons we're requesting this wa wa waiver is first is applicability. Our proposed project is a full site restoration project, which will not require us to make any changes to the stormwater management in the area. On the state level, it is exempt uh, from NIPTES permitting. Uh, it is also the location does not have the potential to impact surrounding homeowners or businesses. And lastly, we do not own the land. Uh, we're forced to go onto ETP's property or Sunoco's property to get to, to, to accommodate the Pennsylvania DOT's road widening project. Are there any questions? I have one, uh, Commissioner Rakowski. Uh, you're saying your pipeline today exists under 322? Yes, it does. Uh, now, where you, your proposal to move over to Sunoco's property, is that, uh, is that all grass now and there's no disturbance whatsoever for stormwater there now? Or is, there, is that a paved parking lot or is that impervious or what, what's there now? What's the, to relocate that pipe, what, what's there now? Joe, you want to take that? Joe DeSanto is our engineer and project manager for this project. We can't hear you, Joe. No, can I can take that one while Joe's working on getting on you there. Okay, um, Caroline. Yeah, Caroline Kerr, I'm the maintenance and technical lead for MIPC. Uh, the area where we're relocating is um, stoned through um, a portion of it, which is part of uh, Energy Transfer Sunoco's um, manifold area. And then most of that is grass there. Um, so it's probably like a couple hundred feet in the stoned area there. And then the rest of it, where it starts to turn and come downward, that is all grass. Okay, thank you. Is this the area by um, before we go over the bridge to 322 on the left? This whole area, um, that, that is 322 right there pictured uh, where our existing line is. Uh, that is 322 and then we're in that Sunoco tank farm area is the area we're talking about. Moving it to the left. So that's before you go over the CSX railroad. So yes, correct. Before, okay. before 95, yes. Before the CSX and then 95 is after that, correct. Right. Okay. Thank you. 
correct. And then 452 is on the other side, yes. Right. Uh, I was trying to figure out exactly where it was. She answered my question. Is it multiple lines or just a single line? And if so, can you give us the uh, size of the lines? Yes, there's two lines that run parallel, an eight inch and a 10 inch. And this is all stormwater? What's, what's kept, um, what product is being carried through the line? Just Diesel sure. run through the eight inch line and gasoline through the 10 inch. What, what's through the eight inch line again? Diesel. I'm, I'm, diesel. diesel okay. Ultra low sulfur diesel. Commissioner, do yeah. you have any questions? No, I'm good. Okay. Nicole, uh, Commissioner Whitaker, I think you wanted to say something else? Yes, I was going to ask um, Lisa what her thoughts were on the um, the waivers from the stormwater. Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, the, the reason that this has going through the process going through is your ordinance requires based on land disturbance, earth disturbance, as well as additional impervious coverage. There is no additional impervious coverage on this project. However, this requires a full stormwater plan per the ordinance. Um, I believe actually that, that the request the justification for this is not the justification that you don't feel that it fits the ordinance. It absolutely does. The justification that I see for this would be that you are in an existing long-standing tank farm uh, that was the Sun Tank Farm and is now, I don't even know what it's called anymore. I apologize, it's, a, it's not an energy transfer anymore. Um, you guys change your names quite often, so I, I don't know which name we're under um, at all, but um, is because of the environmental issues, as you start digging for stormwater management or doing any kind of a, a stormwater management, the groundwater is affected by that. So I don't believe that it's in the best interest for the applicant to be doing that kind of excavation other than what is necessary for the relocation of the pipeline. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, we'll be replacing it in kind also. It's they're going to be, they're they're going to remove soil and then replace and then backfill it with soil. They're not putting any type of impervious surface on top of it. Correct. But this is a land development. If you go mm. beyond um, a one acre of disturbance, you are required to do full-blown stormwater management according to your ordinance. So that's why they're asking for the waiver. They don't feel that it's necessary. I'm, on the other hand, just as we did with the Reed Boyd Farm project mm -hmm. or off of I-95, the, the thought of putting a stormwater facility in for infiltration as well as retention doesn't make sense on this type of a site. So, so basically you're saying the waivers will be okay? What I'm saying is that I would recommend that waiver. Thank you. I don't think there's any other questions from the board. If uh, MIPC has anything else to add, we will listen to it, or if not, we can uh, move on. So, but thank you for uh, uh, presenting tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Lisa. Thank, thank you. you. All right, at this point in time, we'll move on to our professionals report and we'll, move, and we'll start with our township engineer, Ms. Lisa Cantania. Thank you, there is a copy of my report. Um, it's getting longer and longer. It's now four pages. Uh, if anyone would like to review it, it is at the township. Uh, the Chichester Avenue streetscape update, the 
contractor is finishing up a project due to the rains. He's delayed a little bit. However, he will start the, the project mid next week. He'll mobilize and he will be salt cutting uh, to start this the curb work first. Um, PennDOT will be involved with that project as, as an inspector. Um, I also have in my packet a resolution for the Evolution Performance property. This is a project that the board has waived the requirement of land development. This has gone through Delaware County planning and the plan once approved will be, need to be recorded in the uh, recorder of deeds office. I don't know whether or not uh, there has been any communication with Mr. Whitlock with regard to um, agreements for, for escrow for any of the work. There's two conditions that are on the resolution. The first condition is a pavement marking plan. Uh, in, there is a property law, uh, excuse me, there is a depressed curb along the property of Bethel Avenue. Um, through the whole property site. So in order to mitigate issues with, with the cars going in and out at all area along that entire corridor, we've asked for, for, for curb work. Because PennDOT's coming in with the 322 project, that interchange is going to be improved. Uh, Matt Hoopman, who is the engineer for Mr. Whitlock, has put together a pavement marking plan, uh, which will suffice in an interim until PennDOT comes in to do the stormwater, I mean, excuse me, to do the curb work uh, and the new driveway aprons for, for the site. There's also a piece of property that Mr. Whitlock is utilizing to access the property. We have asked and a condition of the approval is that he provide an, a lease agreement that he has entered into or has told us he has enter, entered into with Hartzell, who is the, the adjoining property owner. So they're the two conditions of the resolution uh, that will be entertained next week. Um, we, we talked about the MIPC waiver request uh, the only thing that I wanted to mention is, is if we do the infiltration, we're going to have um, migration of any of the environmentally impacted areas, uh, and we really don't want to increase the migration of any in, in pollutants uh, in that particular area. The 2021 road program update, um, we have provided the list for the 2021 road program. I'm asking the board to take a look at that and we'd like to get a finalized list so that at your next meeting, we will have the bids back uh, and we'll be able to make a decision. Um, prices are going up already. The price of stone has increased 25%. So we need to, uh, if we're going to do this economically, it would make more sense to do it sooner than later. Um, we've also provided a plan that shows speed humps for Boothwin Avenue, and as well a list of streets that the HOA at Yorktown has requested to be joined with, with the project. Um, Gibbons Park materials submittals, I don't know whether, have they shown up? Yeah, Were they no. submitted? Okay, I brought the chip with me just to make sure. So I, um, if anyone hasn't looked at it, that as well as the lettering that was, was submitted, they'd like to have those back so they can get that material ordered. Um, 
Just in some, some comments other, uh, we received today the final invoice for A.J. Jork for Kate's Glen. It's in the amount of $12,347.30. We've also received all the final paperwork, including maintenance bond. Uh, I also received a request from the emergency services director, I don't know what he's called, Ray Fuller officer, I guess he is, um, asking that we take a look and re-address uh, quite a few areas within the township. So I don't know whether it's something that the board wants to consider. I don't want to spend time on it if the board is not interested in doing that that re-addressing, um, but I'd like to have some direction from the board on that. Yeah, Lisa, uh, that request came through from Delaware County Emergency uh, 911 Center. I don't think we should entertain it at this point. I think we should be trying to set up meetings with them to get a little bit better understanding of what they're trying to accomplish before anything happens. They gave like a whole slew of stuff they sent it in. I, I thought they sent it to the fire marshal too, so I'll, I'll check. I say we get more information before we make any uh, final decision. So I would just hold off for right it now. Was, it was a, an extremely long list of entire areas of the community. Um, it, to me, it didn't, it didn't make sense for us to proceed without having some kind of board uh, approval yeah. to do so. And that's all I have unless anyone has any questions. I, I got a quick question. Uh, you or Michael might be able to answer it. How many lots are left in Kate's Glen to build on? believe there's 11. If there was someone interested in the 11 lots, is there a possibility of what would the exist? I don't know where the existing builder sits. I can tell you that the there are, the <laughs> there is the owner of the property does have someone that is interested in buying all of those lots. Okay, he, he approached me about a week ago, maybe okay, two weeks ago. Now's the time. How, I mean, the way houses are selling, I think there's an opening. All right. I believe it's out on the market. Okay. Any other questions for our township engineer? George, George, excuse me, but if you're speaking, I haven't been able to hear you. There's a letter from Willowbrook? On the back of the resolution, that was that letter that came in from Willowbrook. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, this came, this came in yesterday afternoon. My apologies. Um, should have been in the other category. Berger Realty, who owns and maintains the Willowbrook apartment complex, has sent a letter asking for a final approval. Um, they, it really isn't a final approval. They're looking for their final inspection for punch list and release of escrow. Um, they are to a point where they are substantially complete. There's landscaping that needs to be completed. Um, I believe that the building has been inspected. I don't know if it was a final inspection. I don't believe so. And I've asked them to reach out to Southern Delaware County Authority because there is relocated sanitary sewer main that they did as part of the project. So there's a process they're going to have to go through with Southern uh, and the the developer municipal security agreements they have with Southern Delaware County Authority. What I'd like to do next week is to get an authorization, which is required under the municipality's planning code, an authorization for the engineer to go out and do the inspection for the, for the completion of the uh, land development. Okay. This is the Willowbrook Clubhouse? It is. Any other questions for our township engineer? That's the amount of money you got, yeah. Okay. 
We still can't hear if you can speak into the microphone. That would be helpful. This would be nice to turn it on, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm now I was just asking the question of the wish list or the front of the liquid fuel. What number? That's all. If there's no other questions for our township engineer, we'll move on to our solicitor's report, Mr. Michael Pierce. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Mr. President. My report is on file in the uh, in the section uh, related to the activities for the month. There are at least three action items that we should address. One of them is related to 310 Garfield. There is a settlement request for monies that are due and owing, mostly on sewer and trash, as well as uh, abatements that have been done. Uh, the original request had come in substantially lower than that. I indicated on behalf of the township that we would not even entertain uh, a settlement offer that was less than one half of the monies that were leaned on that particular property. Uh, a substantial amount of that is penalties and interest. Uh, after some negotiation back and forth, they did come forward and indicated that they would be paying one half, or that they would be willing to pay one half of the uh, monies that are due and owing uh, as lien properties. Based on my review of the uh, overall settlement of that particular property uh, and the monies that are going to be needed to get it into compliance and up and running, uh, I would recommend that the township at this time accept the settlement and I would be asking for authorization uh, for that in the amount I believe it's. Fifteen thousand eight hundred and ninety some odd dollars, but that exact figure is in there. That way, the property will get back up, we'll get it back on the tax rolls, we'll get uh, uh, get it developed, and hopefully, we'll have one less eyesore related to that. Uh, it was it was back and forth, uh, uh, but they do have a person who is willing to buy it and has set aside monies to rehabilitate that property to get it up to uh, up to code and make it a uh, so my recommendation uh, would be to accept that so that that can move forward and we can, we can go forward with that. Uh, the next item uh, is related to a prior final subdivision and land development uh, resolution uh, related to a Uso uh, that was passed in 2015. Uh, there are no changes to that. However, they are requesting an extension of that for the particular property so that they can move forward with that because of the time passage uh, that had done, we would need to just to re, uh, recertify that or reapprove that. In addition, there is uh, one matter, as you know, we've been dealing with these potential changes related to the zoning ordinance text amendments to allow for uh, craft breweries, brew pubs, uh, restaurants in some of the districts there. We've been working with our consultant, Mr. Seidel, the Planning Commission, uh, and Barb Kelly has been spearheading this particular project. Uh, so we are now in a position where I think everybody has vetted uh, all the different aspects of it, and we are in a position uh, that we, we would require authorization from the board to advertise those changes so that we can move forward uh, to have that use listed into our uh, our ordinances uh, in hopes of attracting that type of business. And full, uh, full changes are in your uh, in your packets, and I would be asking the board for uh, approval to move forward with that. Other than that, everything else is, is mostly routine. A lot of tax appeals uh, in there that we're continuing to monitor, uh, and uh, I attended obviously the. Uh, Planning Commission. Oh, I'm sorry. There is one other matter. We have a zoning hearing April the 6th. Uh, the matter from 3300 Market Street is coming before the zoning hearing board. I will be attending on behalf of the township to protect their interests. Thank you. Um, in regards to item number two under our solicitor's report, I will be abstaining from the vote for obvious reasons. I just want the, uh, the board Not to know the that. Uh, <laughs> He's, he's the man that made me. Um, I do have a question about that. And only this, it's only because it's been six years on the payment for BMP. Is that $4,500 going to be adequate, Lisa? 
Uh, we'll have to check at some point in time to get an escrow once that, that comes up, but that is a good question. Um, the operate, the, that is the contribution for maintenance and, right. and that would, that would be uh, sufficient. What okay. I'm worried about is the short form escrow agreement that I believe was already taken care of. So we'll, we'll need to update those numbers. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for our uh, solicitor? All right, there's no other questions. We'll move on to our manager's report, Mr. George Needles. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the first item I have is we had an individual on the call earlier today to speak about the repository properties uh, we've been getting a lot of requests, uh, again, through the planning and zoning department coming in. Um, one of the requests that we do have is actually for an individual who would like to uh, purchase the repository property that is uh, directly next to her property to utilize it as a yard. Uh, when you look through the best practices for utilizing these properties, that is probably what comes up as the best utilization of those properties. So that is uh, Ms. Joan Posey. Um, and that would be the, the one out of the three that I would recommend if the board is so choose to do something with it, that, that would be the one to do it. You have a letter here from Ms. Posey for 11 Bellevue Terrace. That's her address. It's the property right next to it, I believe. The number is seven. Um, one of the questions that was brought up uh, earlier, the gentleman asked uh, when we would know about when the properties will be utilized. Obviously, you know, we're doing a lot of different planning efforts and these properties could come into play in a bunch of different ways. Um, in the in your packet today is the RFP for the um, uh, for the Master Parks and Recreation and Open Space Plan. I would think that that was where these would first get vetted to see if they could be used as any of those three items. So um, my recommendation would be for next week to just have the one request from uh, Ms. Posey and not the other two. Uh, Wells Fargo went in front of the Planning Commission for the second month in a row and came out with an approval with some conditions. However, when we reached out to Wells Fargo to see if they'd be prepared to present tonight and to, uh, to, to go in front of the board next week, uh, they indicated that they did not have this update on their schedule until after the board meeting. So they are asking for an extension so that they can finish their work so they can be prepared to come in front of you guys. So that'll be something that'll happen. We'll get the extension this week and then uh, next week and then for March, uh, sorry, May, they would be coming in. Township Line Road Zoning. Uh, this is a project that we've been working on with Barbara, Lisa, myself, and Brian Sedell. Uh, it's, it's looking at the Township Line Road area of the town and determining if there isn't a better zoning uh, district that could go over there. Uh, as you know, we don't have a lot of spaces left in the township that can house um, larger developments where we can get job centers in. And, you know, that was kind of one of the things that was identified when we were going through the 322 project is we need to find a way to get some of these job centers in where we're getting sustainable income jobs into the community. Um, you know, those, the, the warehousing jobs, the manufacturing jobs. So we are looking at that area and determining if there is some type of zoning that we could do that would allow for that, but also allow for ancillary uses to that. So if you have 250 people working in a building, there is potentially a need for retail uses, mercantile uses uh, around that. So we're putting together this all kind of encompassing zoning. Um, I would like to get it out in front of the Planning Commission and the Delaware County Planning Commission and make sure it follows through all the, the necessary channels. Um, so. We're going to be meeting next week to discuss a little bit further about these rules and regulations that we're putting in, but I want to get that to you guys, and I'll be seeking authorization uh, at this month if everybody's good with the plan by next Thursday to proceed forward with getting it out to everybody that we need to get it out to. Escrow resolutions, I just have one this month for uh, Mark Roman on uh, Roger, Rod, Rod Jers Avenue, uh, so you'll have that. Plum Street, SDCA easement. Uh, if you remember, we have, well, everybody knows we have stormwater projects in the booth, uh, stormwater problems in the Boothwin Highland section of town. And we've tried a couple different times to design stuff that would work. And uh, so one of the projects that we're working, looking at would require an easement through an SDCA piece of property. And they've been kind enough to draft that easement and present it to us. So we'll have that in front of you guys next week. Uh, Brian Warren is proposing to do a recreation summer camp this uh, summer. Um, in looking at it, I don't think that there's anything that we necessarily need approval from the board. Um, the, the reason I bring it up to you guys is 
that we don't have a line item for the uh, for some of the expenses. So we're going to have some overages in part-time employment if we run this program. We're also going to have some overages in the program department for that. However, we'll have the income to offset it as Brian has outlined in his request here. Uh, also, they uh, would like to put a, the rec board would like to put a vending machine in the uh, Fury Road Fieldhouse. This is something we've talked about for quite some time. Uh, I know there was vending machines previously in there uh, that went away years ago. So they've got a contract that they've uh, put together with an individual that we'd like Mike Pierce to take a look at, make sure it's okay. And if it's okay, that they'll be going in front of you for that. Uh, I think that's all I have tonight. Oh, and uh, you're going to go over uh, Nick Jordan later? Yes. Okay, then I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for our township manager? I have one. Uh, go ahead, Nicole. Thank you. So regarding the repository list, um, I would just add that um, the location of Bellevue Terrace, um, Ms. Posey had been asking about that prior to the board, um, looking at all of the repositories within the township. So I would ask the board for consideration for that approval. And then to add that um, to what you were saying, Mike, to look at what locations we would like to keep as a municipality and then move from there on to our residents first. Um, and if any resident that lives next door um, or lives next to a location, to put that information out to, to, to Upper Chichester residents before we approve um, for outside developers to come in to purchase uh, items off the repository list. That would be um, my recommendation. Um, and then regarding the summer camp, um, are we, um, George, are we waiting? I know that we have the application. Um, it was discussed at the rec, uh, rec board meeting um, last month. Are we wanting to get board approval for that or are we moving forward? My assumption is that we're moving forward with the, the, the summer camp with the COVID restrictions in place. Yeah, the, the only item that I would see that would require board approval would be uh, if at any point any of the line items that we're going to utilize for this would go over the budgeted expenditures. So we'll have to, I'm going to, I'm, I was doing the math with Brian. It's going to be pretty close. We did budget for a potential intern in that department as a part time uh, individual. It mm -hmm. appears we will probably come in close to what we budgeted for that for the staff. Um, but we may have, that may be where we come in and need some type of uh, so so I think what I'll do is I'll confer with uh, Mike Pierce over the next week and determine if there needs to be a, uh, a, a motion for something related to that. OK. All right. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Commissioner Rakowski, you have a question? Uh, on a repository, I just want to I sent that email out earlier uh, regarding the repository list. Um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Whitaker was saying about the residents. Um, I'd like to vet it out in a lot of it over in her ward to, to see if there's any opportunities for us. Uh, but I, I'd just like to make, see if I could vet that out with Nicole in, that, in our area and then we could bring it back and take a look at everything. And I do agree. I mean, these, these, I've been looking at this list for too many years, 10 years since sitting here, but prior to that, probably a good five or six. So. We could get them off the list and offer it to the residents that live next door. That's great. But if we could utilize a lot of this, that'd be even better. Um, the other thing, um, George, um, your zoning on Township Line Road, does that show what we are now too? I just I just saw it in my packet here. Yeah, the first picture is uh, is what is the current existing. zone existing conditions, and then the second one is kind of the what recommendation. The and I have the digital copy I can email out that's in color. Right. Does that go all the way up to Market Street, or is it? Or actually, we only go up to the cemetery, right? Well, it would go up to Market Street. It basically encompasses uh, ninety five down Market Street, Township Line, like that whole block. Up to what's the name of it? Keystone. Are we including Keystone Road? Isn't that up further by the Sunoco? It would go all the way up to the Sunoco. Prior to the Sunoco or Keystone Road? So Columbia. Yeah. Columbia. That Keystone Road is in Excelsior Village. Yeah, it would be. So you mean Columbia. 
It's the on ramp to uh, the, the off ramp from 322 is where it stops. Oh, got it. Yeah, so not Keystone. Murphy yeah. Ford. The left side's ours, the right side's Chester City. Yeah, it would be everything. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. We ended the tire place. Okay. That's all. all. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to our commissioner's report. We'll start with our vice chairman, Commissioner Joe Bacco. Thank you. Um, I want to start out with the uh, it's that time of year in highway and sanitation. Uh, I want to ask for the part-time summer help employees. Um, I think it's we usually go four to five. I mean, we'll ask for five. We could start out higher and four. And there's going to be a full-time position open. We had a, one of the full-time guys is is moving on. He got a, a, a better job, per se. It's, he's not leaving on any bad terms or nothing. I, I don't know if I should say his name or anything in a public meeting. Yeah, I mean, we're going to the presentation next week. Nick Jordan's leaving. He, he's got an offer with the Port Authority, and I wish him nothing but good luck. Um, I know that uh, Pud has somebody in mind. It's somebody that's been uh, here summer help three or four years in a row. Already has a CDL. I'm sure he's going to apply. Um, but if there's anybody, anybody wants to recommend, you know, now's the time to start pushing them forward. Um, the sewer uh, authority, we, we were scheduled, supposed to have a meeting last night with us, them, and Lower Chai about the uh, new line we want to run. Uh, the meeting had to be canceled. We we're going to try to reschedule that for next week. So if anybody you know, is available next Wednesday, we're going to try to do that meeting again. Um, update on the 322 project. Uh, Mr. Gordioso was talking with uh, Craig Williams' office. Section 102 is looking to start in 2025. That's basically where they left off. Section 103, which is down by the 452 area, they're looking to start taking bids and get that started in 2023. So looks like it's a couple years off before we see any action in our town. Um, the only other thing I wanted to discuss tonight is uh, I've been getting a ton of complaints from the uh, Somerset residents about the new uh, land development job going over there in Aston that backs up to them. Uh, I was talking to George a little before the meeting I'd love to try to get a, a meeting set up with them residents and, and the developer over there. I mean, there's been trees taken down. Is buffers going to be, they, they got a ton of questions. I mean, noise, everything. Um, I don't know. If I can get a meeting, I'd like to either take Mr. Pierce or Ms. Catania, possibly both, to the meeting. I just need the board's approval for that. Um, um, excuse me. I'm fine, Joe. Okay. Everybody else okay with that? All right, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Are you going to get someone from Aston Township? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out through Aston to set up the meeting. So. Okay. There, there's uh, claims of water rushing through now since they disturbed ground. I know there's stuff in their plans that they they got to fix some. Stuff. I mean, that's what. That's why I would want to take Lisa. And uh, I can't answer half these questions I'm getting hit with. So I, I'd love. That's why I want to do a meeting. Hopefully, George can get it set up. Aston, the developer, and us. That's all I have, unless there's any questions. Uh, the, the other thing that we mentioned tonight, Joe, um, was the bridge on th on 322, the one that crosses over CSX. Yes, that's part of the holdup. So. That's supposed to be scheduled to be uh, replaced this year in 2021. They don't. They don't have an actual start date um, at at this moment. And um, I will keep. Uh, we we will keep the board and our residents posted um, when that exact due date is going to start. So obviously, there's going to be some rerouting in traffic. So you know, hopefully, we will get a heads up and a traffic pattern. Um, for the rerouting with that project as well. 
All right. Um, we'll move on to Commissioner Nicole Whitaker's report if nobody has any other questions. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Uh, just a couple things. I'll provide full reports next week. Just want to um, let everyone know that we are going to be having summer camp. Summer camp is going to go from July 6th to July 30th ages eight years old to 13 years old. I think they're going to take around 60, um, 60 children. So if you are interested in having your child attend summer camp, um, pick up an application at the township. This Saturday, April the 3rd, will be the Easter grab bag event at the municipal complex. It's going to start at 10 a.m. and will go until supplies run out. So you 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 are families are required to stay in their car, and um, once someone from the rec board will come up and deliver a Easter bag to the children in the car, ages zero to thirteen years old are eligible to uh, participate. Okay. We are also hosting a summer concert series. All the information is on the township's website as well as the Facebook page. So please like and follow the Facebook page as well. Um, provide your email address so that you can receive our newsletters as to all the events that are happening in the township. And that's all I have. Any questions for Commissioner, Commissioner Whitaker? If not, we'll move on to Commissioner Ed Rikowski. Thank you. Uh, reports will be on file. Uh, the Booth One Task Force will be meeting again, the whole task force, April 12th. Um, also, um, a, a couple of things. One thing I have to apologize for last, last month's meeting. Um, I read the report after the meeting for, from the fire marshal and I, it just slipped our mind. But um, there was a thank you for myself and uh, Commissioner Biaco from the fire marshal, but uh, my apologies to thank you should be going to uh, the president of the school board, Ruth Ann Biaco, in the school district. We, we had an incident where a family needed some transportation with a handicapped person, and we could not get anything from the Red Cross at that time, and they needed to be transported to a, a hotel. And this happened back in for February. And uh, I just want to thank them because they helped us within a phone call to get transportation uh, for the child to get to the hotel with the family uh, when they had their incident. Um, so I just want to thank the school district and Ruth Ann Biaco and also Joe Biaco, Commissioner Biaco for getting my phone call and making it work within probably about 15 minutes. So I just want to apologize for not mentioning it last week, but that was in the fire marshal's report. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. And another kudos, uh, people don't realize it, that not just Upper Chichester's volunteers, but the uh, surrounding communities. Last night was another busy night, um, and they did a fantastic job. I want to give a kudos out to them. Um, there was a tractor trailer alongside of a building, one of our businesses here that was fully involved with numerous calls before they even got the call from the residents. And, uh, they knocked it down without any extension into the building. So there was no business loss. So they did a fantastic job. And that was right after another one they had on 320 or the Conchester and Highland Avenue. So they were busy last night. So I just wanted to let people know our volunteers while we're home, nice and warm, they were out there saving in another property here in Upper Chai. And I thank them very much. And other than that, we were, I have nothing else. So any questions for Commissioner Rakowski? If not, we'll move on to uh, Commissioner Joe Neary. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everybody. Uh, most of the reports for the uh, financial department are not available or the police department until next week. Um, it always happens when the meeting falls on the first of the month. Um, but there are already uh, some um, exonerations that are being requested. And uh, George, I do have, uh, I went through the RFP for recreation. Uh, there's some changes that I'd, minor, minor changes that I suspect, oh, maybe some of his verbiage, but I 
just need some clarity on that. And I will have that in the book and return it to you and you can take a look at it. And that is um, all I have. Thank you. Any questions for um, Commissioner Neary? If not, we'll move on to my uh, report. Um, I think uh, for zoning, I think Mr. Pierce went over that the 3300 Market Street is coming up. He will be attending that. Uh, it's MNC uh, Enterprise. Um, also, I will be signing uh, off on the Wells Fargo's uh, uh, extension letter. So hopefully we can get them in here next month. I um, really don't have anything else to report except uh, on Boothman Road. I'm having some traffic um, issues on that uh, stretch of the road. I reached out to Ms. Catania about possibly putting uh, speed humps and tables on there. I did receive letter. I did receive written confirmation from the residents that they would like to have something done. Um, I think at this point, I would like to write a letter to the residents and maybe have a little town hall meeting. Um, it, there's not a lot of residents. Um, the, the residents are minimum on the road, but it, it is a cut through traffic. So um, I like to meet with them and go over some uh, traffic options uh, as well. We don't have anything else to report on. So if anybody has any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them at, at, at this time. I, I just got one. Go ahead. 650 Cherry Tree Road subdivision. Um, after the last, uh, they went in front of planning. Are, are, there, are they making changes and resubmitting or you, you know where that's at? Uh, my understanding is they presented a new plan um, and we can get confirmation on this. The developer is not interested in putting less houses on there. Um, so my recommendation is, you know, I think we should stick to our guns on this one. Yeah, I agree. Um, just to give some examples, we have some, we, throughout the years, there's been areas that have been developed, that have been developed with um, numerous houses on there. One perfect example for me is Concord Valley, where the roads are very tight. Uh, you cannot park on the road. You have to park either in your driveway or in the garage. Uh, the, limit, the parking is limited there, and it's uh, very hard to get it in and out with um, uh, emergency vehicles as well. So I think we should do our due diligence and be smart with um, every future development that comes in. Is that R1 or R2 right now? I can't. R2. R2. So they're still in the sketch plan phase, correct? They haven't submitted any. They haven't submitted any plans for um, development. Yeah, based on, um, I have Barb always send me the unofficial uh, minutes, and it is still a sketch update, and they suggested some changes. It doesn't indicate in the minutes that the um, developer was opposed to it, but that may have been something that came through in the tone of the meeting. I don't, I don't know, but um, there were several suggestions, uh, you know, about putting a loop road in and that sort of thing. And, you know, that may be um, added cost to the developer. So he may not want to do that, but that's what's in the minutes. The, the plan initially was 10 lots. Um, most of the lots were, were actually flag lots or what would be considered as flag lots. The issues there was, was emergency access to some of the lots that were interior. Uh, we asked that there be a, an alternate plan done with a new roadway. They provided a cul-de-sac with eight properties. Actually, the lots were actually larger. But uh, in correspondence from the designer, Mr. Hootman indicated that the, because of the cost of the cul-de-sac, the, the developer was not interested in pursuing the eight lots. I will tell you that the planning commission, um, I believe it was Charlie Fisher, as a matter of fact, questioned, well, you could put a larger house on these lots than you would be able to do with the 10 lot. And then there was a lot of conversation that pursued or ensued, I should say, that while well, we could put a loop road from one driveway back behind 
the front lots and then back down. And I had visions of the issues that we have with Deer Crossing, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure what they're going to come back with, but they are planning on coming back to the Planning Commission with a 10 lot subdivision. Well, let's see what they come up with. But, uh, you know, I, I just think they should build the houses where there's sufficient e uh, roadways and egress and not lock, not lock landing other surrounding properties. And I don't think we should be creating flag lots either. So that's my opinion. All right. Any other questions just, for me? Uh, maybe Lisa can answer this one. On Booth One Road, mm -hmm. and we have the roundabout coming in someday is there any was there any reason they kept that small portion of booth when the road open that little i mean is it is it re feasible to leave it there with the roundabout going in and, and when we've had this discussion quite frankly it's not feasible because it's i'm sorry i thought it was on i forgot i had turned it off um when I took a look at where we can put speed humps in there, speed tables in there, because of the constraints of the 150 feet from the intersection, we're only doing in front of uh, four of the homes. What my thought would be, either we take that small section that's there and remove it, or we do some sort of a bump out so that when somebody is going down the street, they're not seeing a, a ocean of, of paving because that makes them go faster. Yeah. So um, I did put in my, my email when I had the speed humps that I felt that either initially pavement markings to keep the cost down. Um, we haven't seen a final, final design for the roundabouts. However, it doesn't go up that far. So... I think that if we get the roundabout in and do some of the pavement markings along with these two speed humps, it should solve the problem. Otherwise, we really, and, and not only there, but as well that entrance into the last piece of Willowbrook, that, that off building. I think we ought to do something there as well to narrow the eye that, that'll slow people down. Okay. Is that ours? Is that ours or Willowbrook's? That is Willowbrooks. But I think we can have that conversation with them. We try. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there any new business anybody would like to bring up? All right. If not, um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you. All right, thank happy you. Easter. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Happy Good night. Easter. Happy oh, Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs>